The story of evil revolves around a 16-year-old boy whose actions will make you question whether he was just an ordinary teenager. The entire state of West Bengal was shaken by what this boy did, and no one could understand what was going on in his mind. His thirst for revenge made his name infamous across all the police stations of West Bengal. But who exactly was this Sajil, and what had he done? Why did he murder the police officer? What led to this? I will reveal everything in today's story. Now, let's dive into today's story, which begins in 1999 in the dumb, dumb area of Kolkata at Shubham Apartments. Neighbors near Flat No. Fora started hearing loud screams. Initially, they thought it was just a domestic argument. Everyone continued with their day, busy with their own work. But after some time, the same screams became louder, and the neighbors sensed that something was seriously wrong. When the residents of the apartment went to Flat Fora to investigate, they were left stunned. What they saw in that flat shook them to their core. Inside, they found a boy, who appeared to be around 16 or 17 years old, sitting on a chair with his hands tied. His body was covered in bruises, indicating that he had been brutally tortured. His name was Sajil Burai. The neighbors were shocked, not just by his conditions, but also by the fact that Sajil was alive. They wondered where the rest of his family was. As they began searching the flat, they checked each room, and what they found left them horrified. In every room of the flat, there were dead bodies. All of them were Sajil's family members. Terrified, the neighbors immediately called the police. When the police arrived, they took Sajil to the hospital because he had several wounds and needed urgent medical treatment. The bodies were taken to the morgue for post-mortem. The victims were identified as Sajil's father, his mother, and his brother. The police began investigating the case. As they searched the house thoroughly, they noticed that the family's jewelry and money were missing. The police suspected that it might be a case of robbery. They began questioning Sajil, the sole survivor. When Sajil was asked what had happened in the house, he said that during the night, some robbers broke into their home. Two of them were speaking in Punjabi. Sajil was watching TV with his mother at the time. The robbers tied everyone up and killed them one by one. But when the police asked Sajil why they spared his life, he could not give a clear answer. The police initially thought that maybe Sajil was too traumatized to answer properly. However, during the investigation, the police found some evidence that pointed to a different story. The evidence indicated that the murders were not committed by outsiders. The killer had brutally murdered the family members, and Sajil's body bore signs of torture. The police then decided to put pressure on Sajil to extract the truth. Under interrogation, Sajil finally broke down and confessed. The only thing that came out of Sajil's mouth was a confession. I killed them all. He showed no remorse for his actions. Sajil's father had remarried, leaving his first wife, Sajil's mother, behind. Sajil had been taken in by his father and his new family, which included his stepmother and stepbrother. Sajil resented his father for separating him from his mother, and he blamed his father, stepmother, and stepbrother for the situation. When the police asked him why he had killed them, Sajil said it was because his father had abandoned his mother and married another woman. Sajil could not bear to see his father living with his new wife and stepbrother, so he decided to take revenge. He had brought him along, which is why Sajil felt that he had been separated from his mother. Sajil also said that his stepmother treated him very harshly, and his father also supported her. His father would often side with his stepmother, while his stepbrother, Gazel, was treated with great love and care. Every wish of Gazel was fulfilled, and even his father treated Gazel very well. But Sajil had no place in the family. Only he and his mother were unhappy, while everyone else seemed happy. That's why Sajil took such a drastic step to take revenge on everyone. Sajil also mentioned that whenever his stepmother got angry, she would vent her anger on him. Sometimes, she would press a hot iron on his body, which left his body completely burned. He shared these experiences with his school friends, and they were deeply saddened upon hearing about his suffering. His friends cried hearing these stories, and in support of Sajil, they helped him act against his family. When the police summoned all of Sajil's friends to the station, everyone involved in the murder confessed to their role. They all agreed that it was a joint plan, and they had supported Sajil because his family treated him so poorly. They believed that the only way to free Sajil from the abuse was to take this extreme step. 
they all admitted their crime, and when the police asked how they carried out the murder, they revealed that they first went to the market to buy ropes and sharp knives. That night, Sajil returned home, and while his stepmother was watching TV, he tied her up with a rope. At that moment, his friends, who had hidden the weapons, also entered the house. They first tied up Sajil's father and stepbrother. Then, Sajil strangled his stepmother to death, went to his father's room, and killed him in the same way. He then strangled Gazel, but felt that he hadn't died yet. So he stabbed him repeatedly with the sharp knife until Gazel succumbed. After committing these murders, Sajil and his friends cleaned the bloodstains with mustard oil. Afterward, they sat and ate sweets from the fridge, as they had seen a similar scene in a movie where a killer eats after committing murder. They even left money for the sweets, imitating the movie scene. To make it appear like Sajil was a victim too, his friends tied him to a chair and attacked him lightly to make it look as though he had also been assaulted. After doing this, they all left. One of Sajil's friends took the money and weapons with him, to make the crime scene look like a robbery. When people heard about this case, they were shocked to think that a 16-year-old boy could kill his entire family. The police soon arrested Sajil, but it was later revealed that he was actually 17 years old, not 16. Due to his age, the court sentenced him to death by hanging. While in prison, Sajil spent his time like an ordinary inmate. One officer even mentioned that Sajil was a talented painter and often made beautiful paintings that were displayed in the prison. Over time, Sajil made many friends, and nobody would have guessed that he had committed such a heinous crime. Then one day, Sajil developed a severe stomach ache and was taken to the hospital. While at the hospital, he managed to trick the two policemen guarding him by giving them alcohol laced with opium, causing them to pass out. Sajil then escaped from the hospital and fled to Mumbai, where he lived for several years. By the time he was 25, he had married and had a pregnant wife. In Mumbai, Sajil started working with a thief and took the name Sheikh Raju to avoid recognition. However, he was eventually caught for theft and, during the investigation, a police inspector recognized his face. After reviewing Sajil's file, it became clear that Sheikh Raju was actually Sajil, the same boy who had escaped years ago. Sajil was brought back to court, where his death sentence was reduced to life imprisonment. Since Sajil had already served seven years in jail, only seven more years of his sentence remained. He behaved well in jail, knowing that good behavior could lead to early release. Eventually, in 2010, Sajil was released on bail for good behavior. Psychiatrists around the world have different opinions about whether Sajil should have been given the death penalty. Some believe he should have spent his entire sentence in jail while others question why he was released early despite the horrific crime he committed against his family. Sajil's story raises many questions. Despite killing his entire family, he went on to live a relatively normal life after his release. What do you think about this case? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video with another shocking story.